though there's an ad playing. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry about that, but thank you so much, subscribers. What can you do? Okay, so the ad, that over now, or should we wait a few more? Okay, so uh, the little, oh, uh, no miss comes out of the uh, book fort with, which looks like a very thin book. Well, unfortunately, there's not a lot on the reference, but here's the curious thing. The reference book in particular is has a it's authored by the Blood Queen. Do you know of her? I mean, no. Tell me more. Well, up uh, I think it's like there's a seaport where there's a lot of like dragons and shards had fell. They destroy the entire or Elvis kind of castle place thingy. And um, those that survived turned into, and this has no anything, this is pure rumor, were turned into undead and that have a desire for blood with the blood queen in it being in charge. Hmm. That's very interesting. And then I slide a silver across the counter. I was never here. And then I rush out the door. <laughs> God dang it! That, this book isn't worth one silver! And I, I would like you to roll, like, just dexterity to see if, like, you get out there before they can chase after you. Oh, Jax. Like, you can, anything uh, you like to that's dexterity, feel re free. So if you got a particular skill, just as long as it's dex space. Oh, yeah. None. None of, oh, oh actually. Uh. No. Okay, you stealth your way out. Dodging okay. between books and this new tiny corpse. Okay, I'll just roll a, a 1d20 to see if that works, because that's 11. That's pretty low. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> he catches you, and the gnome is after you. Uh, so, you, I... so you are being chased by a gnome going, Stop, thief! Uh, the book I... is more than one silver! I'm going to use my urchin background to dodge into an alleyway and move at twice normal speed through the city under circuitous and mysterious routes. Okay. Uh, I'll... Evens or odds? Odd. Okay, that works. And then, yeah, I'm going to turn into somebody else's really, really famous child and then sell the the other book. Okay, so oh. I'm going to... And then sit up. down somewhere and read. So, do you want to actually go from talked about you selling that now or hold off? Uh... It doesn't have to be like a huge thing, but we can handle it later. Okay. So as you sit down to read, and you notice that the reference guide is very vague. Like a lot of the information in there is purposely seems to be misleading. And if you want to make either an investigation or arcana check, you might learn why. 
Mm. I'm going to make an investigation check, and I'm going to activate Tides of Chaos to get advantage. Nice. Great. Okay. As you investigate it, you know that this is purposely false information. You know that the Blood Queen even put this out, and everything in there is purposely the opposite. Like, it is wrong. It, anything that could possibly be real. But all you know, like, definitively, is the Blood Queen did not want people knowing about the shards. And you know for a fact that these shards connect to the wild magic that you have. Okay. Now, I will, if you can roll history, I will give you additional information, see if like you can figure out why that is. <laughs> Double Should not 19. have been an advantage, but hey, that was nineteen. Yeah, Old twenty wanted you to know this. Yeah. Um, history is like you know that the Blood Queen has been roughly a myth, that urban legend about someone that has been maintaining control in the world, even to kind of like before the last war. And in particular, there's a the last war might have even occurred because the Blood Queen started to lose that control. Something more in the world occurred during the last war. And there's a, if the Blood Queen in particular, like that's been very much on making sure the world works as it's supposed to that people are in control and was com had something gone wrong for the Blood Queen caused the last war. And this makes you think that in connection with the fact that they have this book that purposely tells you about what the Dragon Shards are not and their connection to the wild magic Maybe that there's something connected to the last war, what caused the problem, and wild magic itself. Okay. Then I'm going to go sell both these books. Okay. So, uh, just because I like having these kind of creatures. Uh, you go into, like, this shop owned by a flump. It has lots of tentacles just moving around, like, Hey! Hey, you! You got a book to sell? Come in! Uh, this time, I'm uh, a member of the, uh, like, the Elven Dragon Marked House. Okay. The big one. Uh, step in very... Royally and regally, but also very obviously looking around to make sure no one is is following me here. Do you look like the asshole guard? Sure. <laughs> I love this even more. But with like an obvious dragon mark on the face. Oh. Okay. Ah, you! And yeah, you, you was the one. That's how subordinate. Come on. You got a book to sell? Uh, when they say that, I look really surprised and, and quickly, you know, pat my face and it goes away. Uh, and then I walk up. Yes, I, um, I have some books I'd like to sell. And maybe a book to buy if you have any information. Well, uh, information we got. Hey, hey, hey. Put that down. Sorry. Got a thousand eyes and a thousand tentacles to stop thieves. So, oh, what are you trying to sell? I'd like to sell this book and this book. 
All right, and it looks at the one that's about uh, by the Blood Queen. It's going, okay, that's a fake, and just throws it into the trash bin. Whoever sold you was a fake, so sorry about that. It's good to know there will be consequences. Yeah, yeah, of course. But, hey, I'm guessing you got it on sale. Oh. Now, this book right here, this is fancier. Oh. And it just kind of, like, inspects it. it. And I'm going to see if the guy actually knows what the book is. He does not. He just knows it's really fancy. So, uh, well made. Flickers it around. Oh, there's a lot of good emotions here. Oh. Well, that's sad. All right. Well, I don't have a lot of knowledge on this, but this is well made. I'll give you yeah, you know, five hey, hey, uh, copper, six silver, and a gold for it. Do you know the cultural value of this tome? Nope. Two don't gold. Care. Two gold at the minimum. Thank you for sticking around. Um, well, again, there's not much I can do about that, like you being on and poor times. No, no, I'll take the money. Just keep the silver and the copper. I wasn't here. And take the gold and leave. Fine, fine, fine. Take care of nowhere. You hear as you leave. So I'm guessing at that point, everyone probably gets back together. And actually take a look at the a note that Gert has from uh, uh, Bethel the hag. Gert will unroll it, mutter something about people getting into her mail and then read it aloud for the group. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Thank you for taking on and, and the and, uh, ragged soul. Uh, uh, roughly, I am having to deal you know, with, with one of my daughters, black-eyed Bethel, of having their boyfriend being kidnapped. I don't get why they're asking me to send a message on a trout when they can send a perfectly good raven, but oh well. Oh. Them being kind of like having a subsequent dispute involving a halfling, houseman, several gallons of swamp water, her drizzling Merther her, has kept the, the mother's house and all of them on hand and, and has taken most of the things that I, their mother, have given them time. They are of age. 
But the only thing that seemed to be a mirth is Admir, their, my unicorn, who they had fallen in love with, and now their boyfriend is in dispute. Would like you to help out, uh, Bertha, get their boyfriend back. Yeah. Though I must warn you, the horn is not just a horn. Hern, but you helping out Black-Eyed Bethel will grant you all with a reward. I do like rewards. So are we going to catch ourselves a unicorn or what? <laughs> and Gert looks at all of them. Well, I've had worse days. Sure. Wouldn't want to get on a hag's bad, bad side anyway. And uh, at least we're getting her a lot of business. I mean, that's got to that's gotta help her disposition. And think of the scandal. And Gert starts writing down an outline of like how she wants to write about this because she believes she's a very tabloid-esque writer. That's not the job that she has, but she thinks that this should be like a tabloid. She doesn't think it should be just a regular newspaper. So she starts writing down like how she's going to make dramatic and stuff to add on to her new dating column. Essentially, she just really needs to open her own paper, but I'm too old for that. <laughs> Okay. Uh, does anything else have anything more to say? Because if not, I think that's a good point where we could wrap things up. Nothing else. Looks good to me. Gina's occupied tripping the rest of the day. Yeah. And just to make sure, like, Jen, you might want to take a note. The fact like they say, the horn is not a horn. Just a horn gives you with some foreboding. A horn is not a horn. Yeah, you think a unicorn that horn is not just a horn? That's not right. You get that feeling, Jin, based on your experience. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Thank you all for sticking through uh, all our technical problems today. Uh, we will uh, go around and have everyone mention where we can find you and what your favorite bit is as we go around. Uh, let's start this up with the our newest joint to the group, Gert Sassy with Sanders. <laughs> What game was your favorite part, and where can we find you? Um, my favorite part probably was the use of a carrier trout. <laughs> I would have never thought of that, and it was really clever. Um, but hi, I am Jordan, aka Sassy with Sander. You can find me lots of places, including I do music on YouTube. I am Adina in Fate and the Fable Maidens, an all women family friendly podcast. And also, you can catch me streaming video games on Jam Game Streams on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. And then, of course, I'm here now. So nice. And let's just bring on to the, the beautiful muscle dragon born fan. Jen. Uh, I am far. You can find me. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at L T A L I G. That's L T A L I G. Uh, my favorite bit of today, I think, it's got to be auto shenanigans going from uh, place to place trying to sell books, trying to get a little quick, get rich quick scheme. Quite liked it. Okay, thank you very much. And now we on to Dell, the fungus fun guy. Then it's still out. Oh, unfortunate. 
And, oh, well, then I guess we'll swing back to Otto. What was your favorite part, and where can we find you? Um, I'm Eshi. You probably can't find me anywhere but here. Mondays and Fridays at One Mountain. Um, and on that note, this Friday, we will be s- finishing another Ooh. rip-roaring adventure uh, in Where Things Go South. Um, my favorite part was probably all of the pot stirring, running around, implicating various people in in, in interesting situations. Nice. Pure well, uh, very nice. Well, thank you all for sticking around for this episode of Flushmaker's Folly: The Devil Unleashed. Uh. Uh, uh, I'm Michael Wayne. You give me a clip, I'll give you a gif. Remember, we're all in this together. I'm pulling for you. You can find me uh, tomorrow where I play Tabitha, the delightful chaos vampire. Uh, And the Vampire the Masquerade game that would be about the same time slot just happens to be tomorrow. Uh, Find me on Twitter as Michael Wayne and I'm out and about just looking for a game maybe one day i'll play a game with you thank you very much and thank you raven for just having us all here of course uh as a matter of fact i'm gonna hop over to our intro stream so we can go on a raid uh again thank you uh michael for dming and everybody for playing thanks everyone who stuck around despite the uh internet difficulties we had a lot of um Uh, just like 10 to 15 second internet outages uh, here where I'm streaming from. Um, So unfortunately that kicks us off of Twitch every single time. Um, But uh, hopefully that'll be fixed before our stream tonight. Uh, I'm going to look into it with the internet company and see what we can uh, do. Uh, But you can find us all back here at uh, 7 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time for Empires and Epitaphs, uh, DM'd by Zan. Uh, at Insanity TTRPG, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Empires and Epitaphs is a game where we are basically trying to revive a literal ghost town uh, with a combination of living characters and undead characters. Uh, it's a lot of fun, uh, so be sure to come back for that, and then we're going to go on a raid. Uh, we do need a raid cry. Uh, feel free to toss in the chat any suggestions for that, and let's see who we can raid. Um, looks like... And counter roleplay is still going, so we're going to go raid them. Uh, and counter roleplay. Uh, it's a fantastic channel. Uh, I uh, play over there on uh, Wednesdays. Uh, so definitely give them a follow if you're not doing so already. And then I will uh, see you all uh, t- tonight. Bye, everybody.